Architecture is the process and the product of planning, designing, and constructing buildings or other structures. A good design can make a structure survive and be admired for years or fail even to stand. It's the job of the architect to join both art and science to make sure all the pieces of a building come together in a good solution. Similar to architects, as a software engineer, you will also need to mix art and science to deliver solutions in a satisfactory way. But instead of bricks, you will solve them with code. Hi there, I'm Christian and you're watching The Dev Story. Today I will be starting a new series of videos covering software architecture in a practical way. In this series of videos I will be covering many concepts and fundamentals of software architecture. So hopefully by the end of it you will be more prepared to tackle software design challenges and have better discussions and even be more prepared for a technical interview. So without further ado, let's start. Software architecture has many definitions. One of the most famous one is from Ralph Johnson, where he says, architecture is about the important stuff, whatever that is. But what is important stuff? In the software architecture, we focus more on the structure more than the implementation details. Software architecture is also about making the expensive choices that are costly to change after they are implemented. It's also about making explicit the core decisions that will allow the software to have high quality. Concepts are better understood in practice. Let's build an e-commerce site and see how that looks. So for example, in our e-commerce site, we need to allow our users to do certain things like search the inventory, check reviews, buy a product, review past orders, and maybe other features as well. These are the functional requirements of the application. Besides of what the system should do, we also need to focus on how should the system behave. These are also called the non-functional requirements. These are sometimes defined as the illities that the system can have, like functionality, reliability, usability, efficiency, these kind of things. For example, in our e-commerce site, let's say that we want it to be maintainable for several years, and this is a maintainability requirement. We also want to be able to serve millions of users, in this case, it's scalability. We also want to make it available 24-7, which is a reliability to make sure that the system is very stable. We also want to have good response latency, which is efficiency, and we can have many others. Finally, besides functional and non-functional requirements, you might also have additional restrictions that will limit the options that you will have for your architecture. So for example, we could have some legal compliance, cost, time to market, standards, etc. Uh, several restrictions that will limit the number of options that we will have to design our system. Let's say in our e-commerce side we need to comply to the, with the European Privacy Law, uh, GDPR. So with that we need to take into consideration in our architecture how to handle that. So after you get the context, you know all the things that the system needs to do, how it should behave and what restrictions are in place that you need to take into consideration. So after you have all of the things, you need to prioritize them. Some requirements and restrictions will conflict between them. For example, if you have a strict time to market, maybe you need to drop some features. There can also be other things like non-functional requirements that need to be prioritized. So for example, in our case of the e-commerce site, we might not care too much about portability because we will have a strong control of where is going to be deployed the application. And after it's deployed in there, we don't plan to move it to other platforms. So we could drop portability in favor of scalability or maintainability. So after you have prioritized the list and you have made this trade-off, you need to think about if it's acceptable or not. So after it's acceptable, then you start designing the, uh, the architecture. How do you start designing the system? So the first thing is, once you have it prioritized, start with one important thing at a time. If you try to tackle everything at the beginning and try to think about all the possible scenarios in the future, you might end up having an over-engineered solution. And this is not good because it is an unnecessarily complex system. There is also an acronym for that, that is JAGNI, that you ain't gonna need it. So if you're not sure about something or if it's not prioritized, then try not to tackle uh, at first. Try to postpone it to when you have better context and can make a better decision about it. Now that you have this, you might start thinking about what are the possible architectures that might fit your system. For that, a good book that I recommend and that is useful for me and is, is this free ebook from O'Reilly that is uh, Software Architecture Patterns. 
it is a good boot to get a grasp of different architecture approaches. And you can see several architecture patterns like layered, event driven, microkernel, microservices, and space based. This book shows pros and cons of each of these patterns and might help you at the beginning when you're designing the system what to look for and what would be best for your system based on your current requirements. So we have decided what are some of the features that we want to have our system implemented. We have also mentioned that maintainability is one of the non-functional requirements that is very important for us. So with that we can start designing our system and we can take for example a layered approach. We can have a database or a storage layer where we would store data. Then we will have a logic layer where we will have the backend servers that will be taking care of handling any business logic that we want to handle. And then the visualization part or UI where we'll be allowing the users to interact with the system. And this is how we get to the layer architecture. So here we have defined the architecture with the structure that the system will have. The features can then be implemented following this layer architecture. And if you want to learn a little bit more about how to implement the features in a scalable, nice way, then I recommend you to check out my other video about design patterns. It's very typical in web applications to use a layer architecture, but it's not the only architectural pattern that we can use. There is no silver bullet, so Make sure that in your context you look to different approaches and pick the architectural pattern that will better fit your use case. It's also normal that the architecture will evolve over time and sometimes even in unintended ways that will make expensive changes to the architecture. So you need to make a balance about foreseeing the certain things that you will need to cover versus the things that you need to prioritize in the short term. If you try to tackle everything then you can end up having an over-engineered solution. One of the most expensive things can be scaling. So in our case, we already have the architecture. How can we make it scale to serve millions and millions of user requests? For that, check out my next video. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like the video, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe, share it. And if I missed something or you want me to explain something a little bit better, don't forget to mention it in the comments below. Thank you very much. See you next time.